and thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Margaret Talbot. I'm the UK Marketing Manager for Vitra, um, based obviously based in the UK, and I'm delighted to be joined by Lisa, Dr. Lisa Ackley, um, Chartered Environmental Health Practitioner, and also over 30 years of um, experience and passionate about raising consumer awareness uh, with, about public uh, hygiene issues. We're one of the largest bathroom manufacturers, so for us, well-being, health, hygiene are always kind of a key focus for us, whether that's in the design of products or whether it's in innovation in trying to create um, different surfaces that kind of repel dirt and, and, um, and bacteria. But I'm really interested in understanding your perspective because you come at this from a slightly different angle. Um, so, I mean, I mean, obviously we're in a very, very strange time at the moment. So I'm just really interested in um, kind of understanding from your point of view, what you think are the key hygiene factors for people to bear in mind as they're either work, you know, working from home or being in a home environment to just get us started onto this discussion. Mm. Um, well, I think in, in the home, what's really important is uh, obviously it depends how many people are in the household for a start. So if you've got a really busy household, um, then the, the issue of, um, of spreading um, uh, germs, if you want to call them that, um, between one person and another is raised. If you live on your own, then obviously you can stop the journey of the germ at the front door by washing your hands or sanitising your hands before you come in. Um, but when you start to have households with lots of occupants and they're all sharing the same bathroom or you've got lots of visitors coming in, for example, then um, it's really important to consider how easy it is to actually keep your bathroom clean um, and also to um, think about how you're going to disinfect surfaces. So the, the, the sort of touch points are very key and we've all been told very much more about touch points in the last few months with coronavirus. Um, but for me, that's not news. Uh, you know, I've always known that um, you, we need to disinfect hand touch surfaces. And I've always known as well that you don't want to be putting your dirty hands into your eyes, nose and mouth. And also that you need to wash your hands. <laughs> so for me, I'm just thinking, well, I'm talking to people about the obvious. So it's a bit, it's, um, it's a bit peculiar, really, um, because, you know, I think, well, this is, this is obvious. Everybody should be doing these things anyway. But of course, at last, we've got heightened awareness and people are actually asking me questions about it. And I feel as if I can help people to improve their hygiene and, and really have a, a benefit to their public, uh, to public health and to their personal health. So in terms of the bathroom, I think what I've just had a refurbishment um, in my uh, house and it's been really important to think about the hygiene aspects. How easy is it going to be to keep the bathroom clean? Yeah. And one of the bugbears I have in, in my household is that uh, the, the men don't put the toilet seat down. And I think probably a lot of women would say the same thing. Um, and so I've actually had it designed so that the toilet seat has to go down before you can flush um, the toilet. So I thought, well, that's a neat way of actually getting around this issue, because we do know that um, you can get flumes from the toilet sort of spreading around the bathroom. Um, and it has been shown that that, uh, that can be uh, a way that uh, bacteria or viruses can spread around um, the, the bathroom environment. Um, and one of the things I'm interested in as well is where people put things in the bathroom, apart from uh, the design, um, for example, toothbrushes. Uh, a lot of people put them really close to the toilet and of course if you've got the uh, the non-seat down household uh, with the toilet flume you know you're potentially spraying toothbrushes with uh, with whatever's come out of the toilet um, yeah. so I think people need to think about the uh, the hardware but they also need to think about the uh, the software if you like the, the other things that are going on in the bathroom yeah, one of the things we, d we developed recently, one of the is the toilet that opens up or the seat lid opens up automatically as you approach. Because I think if there's it, as many ways as you can to avoid touching surfaces, it's good. And yes. it, it, the same thing that when you leave the bathroom, it will then automatically close as well. So those types of innovations, uh, I just think are so important, whether they're in the house or whether they're in a commercial setting as well. So yeah. do you think this, because there's been quite a bit in the press recently about the plumes of bacteria that come from when you flush a, 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 a toilet, is it really important then, would you say, to kind of put the lid down to prevent that contamination? Yeah, 
it's interesting because um, more and more advice is coming out about doing that in the, in the wake of the coronavirus. And that's not necessarily because anyone has proved that coronavirus can be spread by the, the FICO oral route, mm -hmm. um, but because they're actually finding coronavirus in feces and in sewage systems, which it, it, at the moment is being a, uh, used as an indicator of whether it's in the community. Um, but of course, you know, it is possible. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, because the virus is so new, we don't actually know uh, enough about the routes of transmission and it's a potential route of transmission. And certainly with norovirus, um, it's uh, particularly important to make sure that you don't have um, the virus spreading around the bathroom and one route would be from, uh, from the toilet flushing. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to have stepped up a little bit in everybody's minds that we need to, to, to shut the toilet lid. Mm -hmm. And I think in a way, if, um, if you can come up with innovation that does that automatically for you, think of all the arguments in the households that oh, you would say yeah. from, apart from anything else. <laughs> it transforms, transforms living, particularly when we're all living together mm. and for longer periods of time. Yeah, no, it's a great feature. People yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Anything that stops people having to touch and mm. anything that nudges people into better behaviour it is a great feature. Children, for example, um, can be encouraged more if, uh, if the soap smells nice. And probably actually a lot of people would be put off if the smoke, if soap smells mm. disgusting. Um, and that is potentially quite personal. But, you know, if we can have soaps that don't smell horrible, that, that perhaps mm. are neutral smelling in public workplaces so that they're OK for everybody. Mm. Um, but at home, I used to um, get the kids involved in choosing the soap so that they could um, they could be excited about the smell. And we had this thing which would, was a frog with foam that came out of its mouth. And everyone loved that. You know, even our guests loved it because they said what a nice yeah. smell it was. And I think if you could encourage, fun, yeah, yeah, encourage people, encourage children, encourage the rest of your household. So you're not, you know, this bossy old cow who's sort of making everybody do this, that and the other, you know, make everybody feel that they, um, they just, it just happens automatically. Mm -hmm. So it's soap dispensers that can dispense without you having to touch them. Taps that come on when you put your hands underneath. Hand drying facilities. At the moment, that's a, that's a hot topic. Do we have... Mm -hmm. Do you do air dryers or do we have towels um and that's that's a difficult one uh, what's, your, in, what's your view with that is it I'm, well i'm thinking really air dryers at the moment are a potential risk because they will stir up aerosols which uh, and droplets even that could have fallen onto the floor um the other issue with air dryers is if they're not really rapid um then people don't want to dry their hands properly um, and the other thing with a paper towel is, is that it actually just helps to get that last, it's the last layer of dirt that might not have been got off by the hand washing. You'd hope people would do it properly, the hand washing properly. But that uh, extra rubbing on the towel is another, another sort of control really to, to help. And we know that people don't wash their hands properly because if you look around by hand dryers in public toilets, you can see how dirty uh, the area is. So it just shows that people haven't actually washed their hands properly in the first place. Yeah, there's lots of signs. It, interesting talking about public toilets because this week there was the um, oh, the government ministers writing to all the local councils. It was something we talked about previously, which was about the access to public washing facilities and public toilets. Are you really pleased to see that the kind of government are taking this really seriously and and asking the councils to open up? Um, Absolutely. I mean, I've had a bit of a mini campaign, actually, because uh, I have been quoted in a number of newspapers saying that I really think these toilets need to be open. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously the trouble was that the message was to allow people to travel as far as they wanted to. But nobody actually thought this through mm -hmm. in terms of people needing to go to the toilet. And some councils have left their toilets open for the whole time. There hasn't been an order to close public toilets. It's just been a decision made. Um, sometimes people have said to me, well, I'm closing the toilets because it'll, it'll discourage people from coming. I mean, honestly, I don't, we can see that that hasn't worked. Um, and I actually did a feature on, um, on Monday on ITV uh, for this morning where we actually went to a public toilet that was reopening in Devon. Um, and, uh, and we talked about how you could use the toilet hygienically if you're a, a customer. And it's, it's caused a lot of fuss because uh, on Twitter, certainly on my Twitter feed, 
everyone's mostly worried about whether you should um, take the seat up or not. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that seems to be the biggest, uh, the biggest discussion rather than, well, actually, isn't it great that we've got a toilet that's open um, mm. and, that, uh, and that people can wash their hands there? <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to people at the moment, when you do go to um, the, the pu a public toilet, and if you do have to touch something on the way out, then that's the time to get your hand sanitizer out and take your responsibility really to, to make sure that your mm. hands are clean as you've left the building. Um, but also wash your hand, hand sanitizer before you go in because then that helps other people. It, it reduces the amount of, um, of organisms on the, on the touch points as well. Um, so that's the rule, really. When you're going in, sanitize your hands. And when you're going out, sanitize your hands. Um, and I think this is really important. You know, the public spaces, uh, a lot of perception, public perception are, um, again, on Twitter feed, I was getting, I hate public toilets. I wouldn't go in there if I really, you know, all the rest of it. But of course, public toilets in themselves are fine. It's what people do to them that makes them horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, there's a lot of people sharing the same space. But, um, you know, the, the councils are actually increasing the amount of uh, cleaning. They put the hand sanitizers in. Um, they, they've sort of cranked up the hygiene as well. But if it's a facility we so desperately have to have because it's not just about visitors to an area. It's also about all those mobile workers who have absolutely nowhere to go to the toilet. Mm. So, you know, we think about all the extra delivery vehicles that we have on the road at the moment, um, you know, delivering parcels, food, food deliveries and so on. It's, it's gone up incredibly. These people don't have anywhere to go to the loo. And the, the health effects for them are, are quite astounding. And the, certainly the Royal Society for Public Health was, wrote a, an article called Taking the Pee. And this was actually all about, um, you know, how... how bad it is for people's health if they can't go to the loo because they will they will dehydrate deliberately mm. and of course that that has a health effect um, it's it, it's a it's a serious issue and it's something we we need more public toilets not fewer yeah i think you're right and i think you know the, the irritation of having to pay to use a public convenience you know yeah. and or you have to then go into a food outlet to to buy something to then use their toilets again for me just increases footfall that's just not necessary if there were more public well, areas you know people won't be able to do that no. um, now because even though the pubs and restaurants are opening uh, on the mm -hmm. 4th of july um they're not going to be open for people to wander in uh, casually um, mm. and use their toilet after making a small purchase mm. um, because in many cases they're actually only going to run through a booking system Mm. So, you know, you can't really book ahead and say, well, I think I'm going to need the loo at uh, yeah. three o'clock today. So, you know, those toilets will be out of use to many people who perhaps used to sneak in and, uh, mm. and use uh, a catering facilities toilet. It's not going to be available anymore. Do you think that the kind of focus that we've had, I mean, we started the conversation about hand washing and, you know, I've had conversations with other people about why for some people this was a revelation that you should wash your hands you know, more regularly. Um, do you think the whole attitude towards hygiene, hand hygiene, will stay even when the kind of COVID-19 eases and the amount of press and attention on it? Do you think those behaviours are here to stay or do you think people will just resort, you know, revert back to how they were before? I think because this has been with us for um, nearly four months now and it's going to go on for a long time uh, I'm really hopeful uh, that the messages will be embedded um, and I think you know really as a society we're, we're probably collectively going to suffer some form of traumatic stress syndrome really from having um, post-traumatic stress syndrome from, ha from having this experience and I think people will remember that they need to wash their hands but what I am worried about is people thinking that gloves are okay and they they are re a replacement for hand washing and that they are safer i mean people have actually again said to me on twitter well when i go to the loo i'm going to wear gloves i mean honestly mm. why are you doing that because you know when you come out of the toilet anything you've touched will still be on those gloves uh, so you know the, the gloves become um, your own vector of disease whereas hand washing would have put a stop to that 
And I think we've got to get people to understand that gloves are not a sensible approach. I've seen people wearing gloves, uh, wandering about, scratching their faces, rubbing their eyes, um, forgetting that actually that is the route of transmission, the, the hand, to, well, one of the routes, mm. hand to eye, hand to nose, hand to mouth. The gloves aren't going to save you from that. They could actually make things worse. And they are supposed to be single use gloves. Mm. <laughs> That's the purpose. They're in clinical situations, absolutely mm. fine. But you don't need them when you go shopping or when you go to the loo. And the other thing that I've, we've, um, there's been quite a bit of comment about, which is the half life of the coronavirus and on different materials, you know, plastics or paper and copper. Do you, what's your view of that? And do you think we should start to integrate that into design? Do you think it would make a difference in terms of whether it's bathroom design or just general public and semi-public areas? Um, it is a, it is a, a, a factor. I mean, the, the, the shorter life seems to be on products such as, as um, cardboard and newspaper, which wouldn't really make any difference yeah. in the bathroom design. Um, plastics and uh, seem to be the ones where um, the, the sort of surfaces where the, the, there's the longest survival of the of the organism. Um, and um, yet there's certainly been some papers on various metals affecting um, the, the half-life. Um, there's a lot of work that people are doing at the moment to try to work out what is the best solution. Different surfaces do seem to have an effect, the, the environment, the, the temperature, the surfaces all seem to have an effect on how long the, the virus remains viable. Um, and generally speaking, if you don't want to confuse people, you could say, well, after 72 hours, there's, um, the, there is a noticeable reduction and you could, you could say effectively that it's mm -hmm. disappeared on a surface. But for some surfaces, such as cardboard and paper, it seems to be a much shorter survival time. Um, for plastics, it seems to be longer. So it, it, there is a lot of work being done to look at whether you can embed materials into these sorts of um, um, uh, structures to to make them work better so a lot of work has been done in silver technology for example which has an effect of uh, reducing the uh, the viability time of the virus although it doesn't disinfect it mm -hmm. there are also a lot of claims from people who seem to say well if you spray this stuff on the surface it's going to last for 31 days quite frankly i can't see how that can happen Mm -hmm. um, and unless it's actually um, bonded into the surface of the uh, of the material, for example, a plastic. Um, so a lot of, there are a lot of claims, a lot of people making a huge amount of money at the moment. And I would say to anyone, don't believe it straight away. Do a lot of due diligence. Really test it out. Let's let's talk about the bathroom space for a little bit. Let's <laughs> let's give the people listening then um, your view of what do you think are the flash points for transmission in the bathroom. What what are the places that we should be really thinking of and focusing on in the bathroom? <clears throat> well, I think one of the things to think about is to um, make sure that the, the door handles are easy, easy to clean because obviously those are the things that you're going to be touching on a regular basis going into the bathroom and coming out again. Um, if you can have an automatic flush, fantastic, uh, because then you, you remove the touch points. So anything that removes touch points is going to be a good thing. It reduces the amount of work that anybody has to do. So even in your own uh, private accommodation, um, a, a, an automatic soap dispenser, for example, means that you, know, you don't have to touch anything. If, uh, if you can have taps that come on easily and can be switched off easily, that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm a real fan of a mixer tap, for example. I think that you know, the taps are a, a touch point. My taps are ones that I can, I can switch on. Um, uh, I have to use my hands, but I can put them down with my elbow. Mm. So I don't have to re, uh, retouch the same surface that I have with dirty hands. So I like to have a tap that I can turn off without having to touch it or turn it off. Um, I think that's really important. Um, and, uh, and then obviously we've got the towels. That's a whole situation in, in a private household, you would have a hand towel. Mm -hmm. um, what I suggest to people that they do there is to have a seven and just take them, up, take them down every day. If it's a busy household, um, and pile them up and then wash them all in at 90 degrees in one go. You know, uh, it's, it's not a huge outlay of expense, but it, it just means that you can keep, keep the contamination down. Is there anything you think that architects should be looking at and thinking about in terms of the bathroom 
and, and hand, you know, been able to wash hands and things like that. I think there's so much that could be done to improve um, toilet hygiene, actually, um, in office spaces or public areas. Um, so I think we've touched on it already, but it, it's the it, reducing the number of doors that people have to touch. So when they think, I, I'm very conscious at the moment, but what we need to do is think about the journey of the people using the buildings. And because I'm dealing with risk assessments at the moment, which have to be produced for COVID-19 um, reopening, and I'm saying to people, think about, the, think about the users of the building, actually map out what they do and work out how you can make it safer for them. And so if we think about the, the toilet space, what happens when somebody comes in? You know, they have to open a door, then they have to go to the loo, then maybe you have to open another door, um, then they have to shut the door and, and keep going through all the different steps and think, well, where can design help here? So if we don't have so many doors to get to the toilet cubicle maybe the toilet cubicle door opens outwards so that when you come out you don't have to touch the handle maybe it's automatic which would be even more wonderful um, maybe the flush is automatic maybe the seat is automatic all these things to stop people having to touch anything would improve people's um, feeling of comfort because although we you know that you can wash all the germs off your hands at the end of the, the stay in the toilets. Um, I think people do have this fear of other people using the toilet before them. If you can remove that fear and make people feel more comfortable because they don't have to touch things that other people have touched, that will make, make them feel better. And it, it may be that you actually think about things like having the wash basins um, outside the toilet area so that people on the streets can use the wash basins as well. Um, so it's not just a toilet area, um, the washing can happen outside um, mm -hmm. so that even if you don't want to go to the loo you can still wash your hands. Um, it's things like having hand sanitizers at the right points for people to use. Um, it, at the moment where we're trying to um, reduce the number of people using a toilet at any one time, or being in a, an enclosed space in any one time, when we're having to think about social distancing, it may be that this is the time to remove mirrors from the toilets, because that will slow down the use of, of, of the toilets, because quite often people stop to readjust their hair or the makeup or mm. whatever. Um, and actually that doesn't need to be going on in an enclosed space. I do like this idea as well of, this, of, of separating the washing from the toilet, so that, and those, then you could get gender neutral, you know, and also use that space, maybe if you're in a public building, that people as they arrive into that building, even if they're not using the toilet, can still wash their hands before they go into the general office. Absolutely. So the whole idea of, of being able to get access to hand washing, I think is a really positive thing. I think it's a, it's a design feature that could be built in with not too yeah. much difficulty. And it could be made to look beautiful, you know, just because it's a wash basin doesn't mean to say it, it, no, it, it needs to be ugly. And it, it could, I think we should be seeing this sort of innovation in the future where we're encouraging and nudging people towards good hygienic behaviour. Um, so, for example, in schools, I would like to see wash basins out, outside of the classrooms, outside of the building, even on the entrance mm. to the building. Uh, interestingly, in places uh, I visited in Africa, that's that has been the case. They, you know, they've had the the wash stations outside, um, yeah. and you know that I, th I think we need to go back to some of these rudimentary uh, ideas of hygiene, which is where we need to stop the germs coming into the workplace or into the schools, um, and be much more aware. And, and certainly, I, you know, when I used to talk to my grandma, who would be around 108 now, I think, if she was still alive. But she used to say that um, they used to make them wash their hands before they went back into school, having gone on a break. Um, and we sort of lost that. And people were saying, we can't do that. We haven't got time. We can't, mm. have, all the we can't have all the children queuing up. It There's no time for them to wash their hands. This well, is ridiculous. Mm. We just need more basins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, I, I think you're right about the whole education. If you start young and get good hand hygiene in at that point, without it becoming, I think you're right, there's that balance, isn't there, between it becoming an obsessive thing, but certainly for children to understand why they're doing it, 
and enabling them to do it so that you know the, the break times are not rushed and they go straight into eating their lunch and they don't have time to wash their hands beforehand mm -hmm. and the same for the staff as well i think i think there is some work that can be done around the school environment um, and just making the products attractive. We've, we've launched, we're gonna, we will be launching um, in the UK a really lovely, cute range of, of bathroom products for schools that have the basins at different heights and they're in primary colours to encourage oh, great. The, the, the children to use the hand, you know, to the, the taps and the, their flush, you know, their flush plates, they're not um, flush handles. And again, they're brightly coloured so that it encourages them to do that. And I think that's, I think it's an exciting kind of development and and if we can instill health you know hand hygiene with children i think that's just a great place to start well, that, that's fantastic why does why does it have to be white <laughs> well, exactly yeah it's cool it, you know bright colors fantastic yeah. what would be your key messages for people to kind of manage manage where they are right now during this um pandemic what would be your kind of top three four whatever messages to take away from this <laughs> uh, right well my key messages are for people to remember that journey of the germ and to think about how to break the uh, the chain of infection um, and we know it's a respiratory disease and we also know that it can be transmitted via hands and surfaces to hands to face so we need to keep bearing that in mind. We need to keep our distance from other people. I know people have been talking about one or two meters and so on, but we know that the further we are from people, the better it is. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to break that journey of the germ with hand washing at key moments. And that is to always either wash your hands or sanitize your hands when you arrive at your destination. So I call that destination hand washing. So that means that you then if you inadvertently touch your face, your hands are clean. Make sure your hands are fit for purpose. And then in, in, in other things, disinfection of key uh, frequently touched surfaces is going to reduce the burden uh, of, uh, of viruses and bacteria on those surfaces. And that will help as well to reduce the risk of you picking up anything on your hands and basically sticking them in your eyes. So I think that's, those are my, my key issues. And if you're thinking about a refurbishment of your house, think about it with design in mind. Think about how you can actually nudge people into doing the right thing, or maybe the toilet does it for you. Maybe the, the seat comes down for you to save all those family arguments and stops the um, you know, bacteria and viruses spraying out when you flush. Uh, anything really that makes your life easier and simpler um, and can reduce perhaps the clutter so that you can disinfect easier, that's going to be a good thing. And it's going to make your life a lot a lot, a, a lot safer and a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Well, Dr. Lisa Ackley, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. I've really enjoyed it. As I said, we could, we could speak much for much, much longer. There's all sorts of aspects with this. I, I can imagine you have been very busy over the last few weeks and continue to be, but it has been an absolute delight to talk Thank to you. you. And it's, thanks it's ever lovely. so much. It's yeah. lovely to talk with you and lovely to, to find a, a company that's actually really keen uh, to get, get hygiene right. You know, this is, this is just so, so brilliant. And, and the design, for me, mm. the design of hygiene to make it easier for people to get it right. That is so important. Thank you. Thanks.